friends and now i am explaining about the characteristic wave impedance so generally the question in examination it comes as show that the intrinsic impedance or the characteristic wave impedance eta it is given as j omega mu upon sigma plus j omega epsilon so this eta it is characteristic impedance characteristic impedance or characteristic wave impedance or intrinsic impedance it is given by this formula so we have to prove this for that we have to start with maxwell's equation maxwell's first equation in phasor form it is given by delta cross h delta cross h s is equal to sigma plus j omega epsilon into e s this is maxwell's first equation in phasor form now i have to expand this equation the left hand side of your equation can be expanded as because it is cross product and we have to consider this field in rectangular coordinate system so for i have to explain expand this uh, as a rectangular coordinate system so it will be like this del by delta y h z s minus del by delta z of h y s a cap x plus del by del z of h x s <coughs> minus del by del x of h z s a cap y unit vector a y plus del by del x of h y s minus del by del y of h x s a cap z so this is the expansion of this cross product on right hand side uh, we have right hand on right hand side this so i am writing here sigma plus j omega epsilon and this es field this es field will have three components e x s into a cap x plus e y s into a cap y plus e z s into a cap z now we have to remember a concept that the electromagnetic field if i consider the electromagnetic field it is propagating in z direction so if we have sinusoidal wave so this if this e field is moving like this this is the motion of e field so for first cycle it moves in upward direction in second uh, half cycle it moves downward with the same height with the same amplitude so if this is the x direction if this is x direction the y direction will be like this this will be y direction so if this is e field the h field will move like this it will move like this so there will be a 90 degree angle between these two field this is h field this is the magnitude of h field so it is moving in positive y direction here it is moving in negative y direction so by whatever amplitude it moves in positive y direction it moves in negative y direction with the same amplitude so the resultant motion in y direction it will be zero if this is zero the resultant motion of h field in y direction will be zero similarly the e field when it moves up with some amplitude it moves down with the same amplitude so the resultant motion of e field in x direction is zero so we can say that the e field is only moving in z direction the h field is also, is also moving in z direction their motion is finite in z direction but their motion is constant or we can say zero also their motion is zero in x and y direction so the uh, the z come the x and y direction motion is constant or zero so their derivative will be zero the components of e field and h field if they are differentiated with respect to 
x or with respect to y the differentiation will result zero you can see here this is edge field it is differentiated with respect to y we know that the edge field is not moving with respect to y it is constant with respect to y so this derivative will be zero similarly this derivative it is h derivative of h with respect to x this will be zero similarly this will be zero because it is differentiated with respect to s similarly this will be zero because it is differentiated with respect to y their motion with respect to x and y is constant or zero but in case of this z direction uh, the edge field because it is moving in z direction h field and e field both the fields are moving in z direction so their motion is finite or uh, growing in z direction it is varying in z direction so this differentiation will not become zero this will persist on right hand, on right hand side we have fields e x e y e z so uh, we know that uh, this e field it is perpendicular to z direction so if this e field can have component in x direction as e x it can have component in y direction as e y but it cannot have component in z direction it can have component in x direction as well as in y direction because the field it moves it can move like this this e field can come in the place of h so at that time h will move in place of e in negative direction so this field can rotate like this about z axis this field can rotate about z axis but by um, at any instant the angle between e and h will be 90 degree it can rotate the e can come in place of y in that case the h can go in place of x angle will be 90 degree so it e can have component in x and y direction similarly h can have component in x and y direction but both this field it is perpendicular both the fields are perpendicular to z direction so they cannot have component in z direction their component e z or h z will be zero so on the right hand side we have this e z component it will be zero it is zero because e cannot have a component in z direction because angle is 90 degree so if i rewrite the equation the equation will look like this minus del by del z of h y s a cap x plus del by del z of h x s a cap y on right hand side we have sigma plus j omega epsilon into e x s a cap x plus i am right multiplying this equation with here uh, this bracket with e y s it is sigma plus j omega epsilon into e y s a y so this complete equation now i can equate this x component with this x component and this y component with this y component so equating x and y y components so x component if i equate x component it will be minus del by del z h h y s it will be equal to sigma plus j omega epsilon e x s and if i divide the page like this uh, if i equate y component it will be del by del z of h x s is equals to sigma plus j omega epsilon e y s now before proceeding this we have to consider the solution of wave equation we have a solution of wave equation like this if we have filled e h y s here so we can have solution like this h y s is equals to h y 0 into to the power minus gamma z this is solution uh, it is general form of solution of wave equation in terms of y component this gamma is propagation constant this z is the direction of propagation and h y 0 is the y component of h field at time instant 0 it is y component of h field at time instant 0 this is h y s uh, phasor component of h in y direction uh, for getting for putting this value here i have to differentiate h y s with respect to z so if i differentiate h y s with respect to z i will get del by del z 
एच वाई एस इक्व टू एच वाई जीरो डेल बाय डेल जेड ऑफ डिपा माइनस गैमा जेड दैट विल बी इक्वल टू एच वाई जीरो इन टू डेरीवेटिव ऑफ ई टू दावर माइनस गैमा जेड इज ई टू दावर माइनस गैमा जेड इन टू डेरीवेटिव ऑफ माइनस गैम डेरीवेटिव ऑफ दिस माइनस गैमा जेड इज माइनस गैमा सो यू कैन सी एच वाई जीरो इन टू ई टू दावर माइनस गैमा जेड इज नथिंग बट एच वाई एस एच वाई जीरो इन टू ई टू दावर माइनस गैमा जेड इज एच वाई एस सो एच वाई जीरो इन टू ई टू दावर माइनस गैमा जेड so it will be del by del z h y s is equals to uh, h y s into minus gamma or minus gamma h y s similarly i can solve for this also here we have h x s so for that solution of equation will be h x s is equals to h x 0 Into to the power minus gamma z. This minus gamma. This gamma is propagation constant. This h x zero is the x component of h field in uh, at time instant zero. This is phasor component of h field in x direction. So for this, uh, I need to differentiate the equation with respect to z del by del z of h x s. So on right hand side, this is constant. So I am taking it out constant outside h x zero. And derivative of e to the power minus gamma z will be e to the power minus gamma z into minus gamma. This will be minus gamma into h x zero into to the power minus gamma z is nothing but h x s. It will be h x s. So we got uh, this del by del z of h y s as minus gamma h y s, and similarly del by del z of h x is this. Now, we I can put these values, del by del z of h y s here, as minus gamma h x h y s. So it will be like this. Here, one more thing. This is minus sign, and is here we have minus sign. So both minus sign will be cancelled. We got plus. We will get plus sign. This is gamma h y s on left hand side. On right hand side will be sigma plus j omega epsilon e x s. And here we will be having uh, we have minus gamma here, and here there is no more negative sign, so minus sign will remain as it is. Minus gamma h x s is equals to sigma plus j omega epsilon e y s. Now we have to put the value of gamma here. We have to substitute the value of gamma in above equation. The value of the value of gamma it is given by gamma equals to under root of j omega mu into sigma plus j omega epsilon. This is the value of gamma. So we have to put this value in both these equation and we have to solve simultaneously. So uh, I need to take e x s and e y s on left hand side. So I will be doing that simultaneously. Uh, e x s will be equal to e x s will be equal to gamma h y s upon sigma plus j omega epsilon. And if I put gamma here, it will be under root of j omega mu. Sigma plus j omega epsilon upon sigma plus j omega epsilon into h y s. And on this side, if I uh, take e y s on left hand side, I will be having a uh, simultaneous. If I put the value of gamma also, it will be minus under root of j omega mu sigma plus j omega epsilon divided by Sigma plus j omega epsilon, and this h x s. No, uh, I can write this bracket because it has power one, so it can be divided into two brackets of power half, and power half means under root. 
so this can be taken inside the under under root to cancel this um, bracket on in the numerator so i can write this equation like this under root of j omega mu sigma plus j omega epsilon divided by under root of sigma plus j omega epsilon into under root of sigma plus j omega epsilon into h y s so this sigma plus j omega epsilon will get cancelled with this and this will the sigma plus j omega epsilon will come in this denominator it will be like this e x s will be equal to under root of j omega mu upon sigma plus sigma plus j omega epsilon h y s this side we will be having e x s is equals to minus under root of j omega mu upon sigma plus j omega epsilon into h x s so we got two equations e x s uh, uh, this is e y s this is e y s sorry so we got equation for e x s as well as e y s so uh, now what we have to do we actually our, our aim is to find eta and this eta is intrinsic impedance its unit is ohms because it is impedance its unit is, uh, unit is ohms so to get this value we can divide e by h because the unit of e is volt per meter and the unit of h is ampere per meter uh, and this meter meter will get cancelled this volt upon ampere it is nothing but ohms volt is uh, this voltage this current voltage upon current is ohms this is ohms law using ohms law we got this so for to get the ohm means to get this value we had to differentiate uh, we had to divide e by h so here we have e as well as h so but we have components of e x and y and component of h y and x so uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, like this this e com e x component and if we have this e y component so to get e we have to complete this parallelogram so we can get e as this so to get e this, this is a vector sign but here we don't have vector so removing this vector this is this only distance e x this is distance e y we don't need this and this is a distance e so to get this e we can use pythagoras theorem so this e will be e square will be equals to e x square plus e y square so to get e we have to square the components and then we have to add the components to get e we have to square and add the components similarly to get h we have to square and add the components like this h x square plus h y square so we have e as well as h in these two equations so we can square the equations and then we can add the equations so i am squaring the equation squaring and adding the equations So it will be e x s square is equals to uh, our root will get our root will be removed it will be j omega mu upon sigma plus j omega epsilon h y s square and this e y s will be e y s square is equals to j omega mu upon sigma plus j omega epsilon into h x s square because this minus sign if we square this minus it will become plus so there is no need to write minus because it will become plus minus of minus will be plus now i have to add these equations so if i add it will be like this e x s square plus e y s square is equals to j omega mu upon sigma plus j omega epsilon h y s square 
प्लस जे ओमेगा म्यू अपॉन सिग्मा प्लस जे ओमेगा एप्सलॉन एच एक्स एस स्क्वेयर आई कैन टेक द ब्रैकेट कॉमन इट विल बी जे ओमेगा म्यू अपॉन सिग्मा प्लस जे ओमेगा एप्सलॉन इन ब्रैकेट एच एक्स एस स्क्वेयर आई एम राइटिंग एक्स फर्स्ट देन बाय एच वाई एस स्क्वेयर You know, this is e x s square plus e y s square. I already told that if I square and add, I will get e square. So if I square and add e x s plus e y s square, so I will get e e s. I will get e s square. Then on right hand side. So I will get j omega mu upon sigma plus j omega epsilon into h s square. So if I divide e s, if I take this h s on left hand side, I will be getting e s square upon h s square on right hand side. It will be j omega mu upon sigma plus j omega epsilon. Now, if I remove this square sign, for that I have to take square root. So taking a square root, I will get E S upon H S on right hand side under root of J omega mu upon sigma plus J omega epsilon. And this left hand side is E. It has unit volt per meter. H has unit ampere per meter. This meter meter will get cancelled, and volt upon ampere is ohms. It means we got the value of impedance. So this ratio is nothing but intrinsic impedance. This is like this. Um, I already told in the beginning that the ratio of E and H is impedance. So we got this. So this is nothing but impedance. It is denoted by eta. It is intrinsic impedance under root of J omega mu upon sigma plus J omega epsilon. The unit is ohms. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe this channel.